Let's move on to the next marquee game of the weekend. Oregon against Georgia in Atlanta. This is technically a neutral site game, but I'm sure Georgia will have the majority of the support. Georgia 17 to 17 and a half point favorite. Keeps bouncing back and forth over under 53. This game's 3.30 p.m. Eastern on ABC. It's Bo Nick season for Oregon. We will see what the offense looks like. Historically, it's going to be under doing it. It's going to be fat, faster, take some shots, RPOs. Um, we'll see what it looks like there. The offensive line. Now, I, I played Oregon mainly because of two factors. I see value in the number. I think I'm lower on Georgia than the market, and I'm higher on Oregon. I played in the win the Pac-12. And, but there are, also, there are also some things that I like about this Oregon team. I actually like what they – they're secondary. Some people have questions. I actually like the kid that they brought in from Colorado. You know, five-star kid on the other side. Their linebackers are excellent. Their, their defensive line, even though they lost Thibodeau, is extremely deep. And, you know, offensively, they have one of the best offensive lines. It's a crystal ball team. One of the best offensive lines in the country. That's enormous against Georgia, right? Georgia, they did lose it. And at a, just a massive amount of talent to the NFL from last year's national championship team. But the Georgia is a team that reloads with five-star talent. There could be some growing pains early. We'll see. But their defensive line is once again loaded. And there's not many teams that have an offensive line that can match up. And Oregon is one that does on paper, at least. So I do like that. Um, I also like the fact that, and we talked about this on the favorites podcast, Dan Lanning, comes from Georgia. We'll see how, what kind of impact that has on Georgia. I don't think it's going to be a, a massive loss, but he's, and this is narrative based, but he's human. This is his old team. He also knows his old team very well and Stetson Bennett very well. And what do you think he, in this game, if Oregon wins this game, I mean, it is driver's seat to the college 12 playoff. You can lose another game, win the pack 12 and you're in the college 12 playoff. And he, on a personal level, I'm sure he wants to win it. I also think that the back door might be open on the flip side. I don't know if they want to run it up. If it's, you know, at 24, you can get in the back door here. But every wrinkle, so little, every, they're going to throw the kitchen sink out here. And I think Lanning's knowledge and then just the amount of preparation time that he's had here is, uh, is going to pay dividends. So I think there's value in the number. There's other reasons to like them. Now, similar to Holt Nailers, it's, you know, the, this bet, this could be Oregon down through three late or it could be Oregon down 28 late depending on the what you get out of the Jekyll and Hyde quarterback and Bo Nix so which Bo Nix is you know Bo Nix is going to make some spectacular plays he's going to make some boneheaded plays it's uh, it probably comes down to a matter of where on the field and when and how many of each does he make uh, but I think that there's over 17 there's too much value to pass up here you agree yeah, I agree completely. This is a game I make <laughs> Georgia minus 10 on a neutral. Uh, they took a real big power rating hit, about five points of power rating hit on defense because they don't return more than 42% of their tackles, passes defense, or their pressures. But I have to ask, does it matter when you're reloading with the kind of talent that they're bringing in? Dan Lanning knows this defense in and out. He recruited every single one of these kids, and he knows the basics you know, like don't run at Jalen Carter on the defensive line. Don't throw at Keely Ringo, right? In the secondary. I mean, it's pretty basic. And he, so, he also knows the offense, though. They were he was going against the offense for the entire season. I think that right. helps too for his defensive game plan. Yeah. And don't think that, you know, Dan Landing's not sitting in Kenny Dillingham's uh, you know, offensive coordinator room and talking about what the execution is going to be here. So, you know, I think there's a couple of things to look at here. The reasons why I like the number at 17 and a half, which it seems like we're getting a lot of buy on Georgia at 16 and a half, a lot of buy on Oregon at 17 and a half at most of the sharp books is I think Bo Nix's familiarity with Georgia too. And one of Bo Nix's best seasons was with Kenny Dillingham as the offensive coordinator at Auburn in 2019. So let's review. Cause remember Auburn may be in a different division, but they have to play Georgia every year, uh, you know, in the sec. So in last year, and by, and by the way, before you review this Nick's for, Whatever you think of him, 19 Dillingham OC, 20 different OC, 21 different OC. This yeah. will be the first time. Now, granted, there's a couple of seasons, but the first time he has, he's on a new team. So you think that's going to be some growth pains, but he finally has a, a coordinator, the one that he excelled with uh, in the second season. 
Yeah. 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 And, and I think I was, you know, I'll go backwards from that. And last year he had 217 yards against Georgia, three big time throws and only two turnover worthy plays. Not bad, right? Good performance against what was the best defense in college football. Then you go back to, yeah, you go back to the pandemic season of 2020. He had 176 uh, yards. He had one big time throw, two two turnover worthy plays, not disastrous, not things we've seen out of Bo Nix before. And then you look at his first season as a freshman underneath Dillingham at Auburn. He didn't have any turnover worthy plays and he threw for a touchdown and he rushed for a touchdown in the fourth quarter. Yeah, he also had a fumble in the first half, but that's just Bo Nix ball. So Dillingham has faced Lanning before. And I think there's a lot of familiarity when Bo Nix lines up and see, it's not like he's going to see the Georgia defense, especially with a whole bunch of new faces and just cave. He's very comfortable playing them and he's been steady. He hasn't been God awful, which we've seen out of Bo Nix. So I'm all in on Bo Nix season covering the 17 and a half. I definitely would want to get that hook there because, you know, Bo Nix don't quit right in the fourth quarter, you know, he's going to try to get that cover. But I think the final thing I'll say about this game is crystal ball worked his tail off on the recruiting trail to build trenches on a West coast school. They return all five offensive linemen. They're really good. They return two of the best interior defensive linemen in all of the PAC 12, maybe in the nation. And if they're going to challenge to win this game, Noah Sewell at linebacker is going to have to play lights out because these, these three tight ends, Brock Bowers, Darnell Washington, Reed Gilbert, they are the most elite tight ends in the nation for Georgia. And once Stetson Bennett starts targeting that, I'm just having, you know, if you fade Georgia, you have nightmares of Brock Bowers running up the hash, right? <laughs> like with the ball, just running people over. So that you need Noah Sewell to have his best game ever. But I'm a believer in Bo Nix. Uh, you know, I like Dilling. I don't think Dillingham is one of the best offensive coordinators in the nation, but he's proven it against Georgia before. And he knows Bo Nix and Bo Nix is steady against Georgia. So let's do it. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned so important when you face Georgia with their one of the on paper the best tight end rooms we've seen in a long time. Mm-hmm. Then you mentioned Sewell. They also have a healthy Justin Floback, who potential All American linebacker in what should be a four two five D. So their linebackers are loaded, and their D line, as you mentioned, great up front. They can match. They can uh, compete here in the trenches, which a lot of times these Pac twelve teams can't when they're playing the SEC. And I think it helps that Nick's has had a ton of experience going to, you know, hostile environments in the SEC. And this is, won't be as bad as some of them. It's a a neutral, but it'll definitely be heavy Georgia. And he's played in a lot of these games. So I think that will certainly help. 